Right, welcome back to the channel. We are waiting for the Shangri-La Champions and Heritage course. I've no idea where that is, but that's what we're going to be playing in terms of the testing this week uh, in terms of Trackman. But this club is really interesting. The first one in the test uh, is the Cobra Rad 5 wood. I've just took the wrapper off. Uh, I have never hit any shots with this as yet, but it's really interesting to me in terms of how it looks first and foremost. It is a real chunky, very meaty club head um, and very much different to the one that it's going up against. So don't forget, that's the 5 wood, the Cobra Rad, and it's going up against the Mizuno 5 wood, the STZ, which I tested last week, which was really good in terms of performance very much different in the way it looks, very much more of a shallower looking face, a bit more elongated in terms of the crown. So they look different, but how will he get on in terms of performance? We're loaded and ready to go. It's 321 yard par four. Let's see how these two go. Right, I'll start collecting data with the uh, Cobra Rad first of all. Just a quick mention, again, different shafts in each club. Yes, there are differences, and we've also got half a degree aloft difference. Standard five wood on the, uh, on the Cobra is 18.5, and in the Mizuno, it is 18. So there will be a difference, but like I always say, this video is just a bit of a guide. Don't get too hung up on that. This is a Fujikora Motori uh, F36 Stiff. Uh, that's the shaft we'll be using. But the big thing, like I said, for me, was the difference visually at address. This is a real chunky club and very different than what I've seen uh, for quite some time, to be honest with you. I'm not going to go into sort of um, all the technical aspects of what Cobra is saying this driver does, but I noticed very much in the way that the face is wrapped around both the uh, crown and the sole is very much different. We've seen that in the previous uh, models as well. There are different models available. We're into what is the standard eight grams of weight either side of the heel and toe. There are some draw bias options, but for me, this is what we're going with. And the other interesting bit, we can't really test that off of this mat, is the T-rails, which again, are very good in terms of from what I've used in the past, in terms of gliding through turf, picking it up um, off of a tight line on the fairway. But like I said, sits really proud and prominent, and there's a massive difference between the color of the face and the material of the face, which is uh, very much like graphite gray, steel looking, and then you've got the carbon shine of the crown, and they're separated very differently. And again, they've done something very good in terms of framing the ball at a dress. It's, like I said, I mean, I've never been a massive lover of Cobra products, I'll be honest with you, and I know they've been very, very successful, um, and that's probably uh, against the grain in terms of what most people like, but for me, this is head and shoulders above what they've done in the past. I love the look of this thing. Anyway, how does it perform? Let's see if we can find this uh, rather odd fairway that we chose to play um, on this golf course, but it's an interesting one. You'll hear again, uh, and hopefully I say this in every video, I hope you do pick it up in terms of the audio, how that sounds. Quite a harsh feeling. Uh, back into the realms where we talked about the, uh, the, the PXG, um, the Ping G425, they've got this kind of very much the hard face and that's how it sounds coming off it. Um, but it's performing incredibly well. And, and again, with them all 18.5 degree aloft, but what it does in terms of the launch, and we'll see in the numbers later, is it fires the ball up into orbit. And that's the bit that uh, impresses me most of all. If you see where that thing's going, it's like the trajectory is just onwards and upwards. It's, uh, that's a real good ball as well. That's the middle of the fairway. I'll switch off and I'll start to hit some balls with a Mizuno and I'll give you my sort of differences in terms of uh, between that and this. So chalk and cheese in terms of how these two things look. The crown is so, so different. And the Mizuno crown this year in the, um, well, in this range full stop is very different. Sort of solid black line immediately behind the ball and then into that sort of carbon imprinted crown. Um, I think it's gonna be one where it's a, I wouldn't say Marmite, but it's definitely very much different than what they've done before. And they've got some strong white bold uh, face lines, which again, a right across the club face, and I prefer what Cobra have done, and I mentioned it last week in their Ping G425, is that they've got this kind of, like, cut out the void in the centre of the club, which is something different that allows you to frame the ball just uh, as opposed to just these three, um, or sorry, not three, the white lines that are running straight uh, from heel to toe. Um, but again, sits a little bit more shallow, a little bit more elongated in terms of, uh, in terms of the length of the crown as well. And there's one other noticeable difference. It's a solid ball and the notable difference and I hope you picked it up with that shot because I did straight away and I've just switched out I've just hit two balls to do this clip with the uh, with the Cobra and I said how harsh the sound is and quite hard off the face 
We've gone straight into this and it's really, really noticeable in just how much softer this is in terms of its sound. I mentioned it in the initial review last week. So it's a, it's a difficult one for me, that personally, because uh, that thing looks really good, the Cobra, in terms of how it sits and it kind of really looks uh, muscular behind the ball, if you like. Really powerful looking club. But I've got to say, from a sound perspective, I prefer, and I feel, I prefer what comes off of this uh, Mizunum. We've had some decent performance here this morning. There's another one. Right, first thing to explain is change of outfit. It's a different week because unfortunately last week, uh, as I explained where we were in terms of course-wise, I lost all the data. So we've had to do this all over again. We popped over to La Hinch in terms of the simulator and as you can see, a rather tight par four there, which uh, was not easy to find a fairway, I'll tell you. But we've got all the data that'll come at the end of this video. But for now, we've set up a situation where normally these uh, little challenges are put up at the end of a video have been based around a par three, based around a flag. But on this occasion, it's based around a fairway and it's extremely tight, as you can see on this uh, par four at Bay Harbour. Really narrow out of the trees. And for me, it's the exact reason why I think this kind of club is needed in every golfer's bag. These sort of tight par fours is absolutely perfect. And for me, would I fancy driver off this tee? No, I wouldn't. So I'm gonna go with, um, there's a lot of fairway over to the right hand side, as you could see. So for me, it's a case of, can I hit a bit of a cut, which I like to hit. It's about control not necessarily about yardage, so we're looking for a couple of hundred yards, finding the fairway, which is easier said than done. Oh, that's not a bad ball. Have I turned it over too much to the right hand, uh, the left hand side? Stay ball. It's tight down the left. Just caught the tree edge there. That was such a good strike as well. Come down. Well, well that struggle for a line there. What did that finish up with? The 190 carry, so let's see if we can give that a little bit more and we just need to hold off onto that. Uh... That's a better ball. That should be banging in the middle of a fairway. Exactly what, like I said, what I'd be looking to do. Bit of control, that little bit of cut away to that big half of the fairway that we're looking at. And that's banging in the middle of it. Really happy with that shot. And like I said, you know, See what that did in terms of carry. Should have been around that. Yeah, 208 carry, a much more positive strike. Move over to the Mizuno. But the thing is, in all of this video, the thing that I would sort of reference all the time is the idea of the five wood, and a seven wood for that matter, is a club that every average golfer, I reckon, should have in the bag because this is exactly the place that you'd want to use it. And it's still giving you 208 carry. What's this, 343? We've got 135 yards in for our second shot. It's perfect. And these two, I'm going to do a what's in the bag video uh, in, the, in the next, well, in the next week or so. I'm not sure when that will come out, but there's every chance one of these two will feature in that bag because seriously, these have been two of the best clubs that I've tested um, in 2021. They both perform incredibly well. Can I do them some more justice while we're doing this test or this challenge? Oh, again, absolutely ripped it, but just might start a little bit down the left. Comeback ball. It's pretty much carbon copy of what I did with the Cobra one. Just down that left hand side. Got a bit of a more fortuitous bounce out that time. Um, and 213 carry again. I knew I got a really good knock on it, but uh, it's not in the fairway hand, so we've just got to hold off a little bit more. See if I can get one into the fairway for the Mizuno. Again, ah, does that cut too much? A good strike. 
That should just hold on to the right hand side of the fairway, should it? Uh, maybe first cut is it? It's close. Oh, we nearly grabbed a piece of the fairway, but to be honest with you, pretty much uh, and 206 carry. So pretty much equal uh, in terms of who won in terms of the challenge. Each of them sort of found a fairway uh, and each of them found the trees and that was very much down to me rather than the club. But like I said, the interesting thing for me is the, uh, this kind of club is so versatile and so useful to so many average golfers that we really should be taking a bit of a closer look at these and these two in particular are real good performers. Anyway, challenge done. Let's go and have a look at the data and see if what split them in terms of uh, performance out there on the fairways at La Hinch. Right, well, a little bit of fun there to end the video. And uh, th there's, to be honest with you, in terms of data, which I'll show you very, very quickly and also a dispersion chart, there is little to split these, but a lot to split them. Uh, and that was down to um, yardage, carry, and you see it there in the final sort of, uh, or the test that we did, there was a big difference in what I managed to achieve out of both of them. Now that doesn't mean to say one is better than the other because the whole point of anything like a, a five wood, seven wood, it's about where does it fit in your bag and how does it gap and what is it you want it to achieve. So I think you're looking at kind of like, yes, the overall carry distance, but then you're perhaps looking at the launch angle, looking at how the ball is coming down and landing, what kind of spin numbers on it. So there's a lot of things to consider. So while you're gonna see some differences, uh, not necessarily means one is better than the other. But anyway, let's start off with the yardage, um, the, yard, the numbers performance-wise of the Mizuno. Um, ball speed 142.5, spin rate of 4.3, 219 carry, launching 14.6, 118 peak height, 229 overall suggested distance, and a descent angle of 48.1 degrees. Now for me, that's a phenomenal set of numbers. Um, so, it, and it gives you, it gives me in terms of 220 carry, sits perfect in my bag in terms of what, where I'd want it to be between a 220 carry on a on a tight par four or or is perfect and then a second shot into a par five that has got 118 peak height and coming down at a 48 degree land angle again is perfect so i think that and a 4-3 spin it is so so good and like i said it performed incredibly well out there and to be honest with you if you've watched previous videos you'll know uh, quite where this club ended up but let's throw in the cobra and again i loved it I thought the Cobra Club was fantastic. Um, one of the best Cobra products I've used in the last couple of years, I'll be honest with you. That's how good I raised it. Now then the ball speeds were lower, 138.6. And we can go in and analyze all the kind of different shots as to where they were off the club face and whether or not my performance perhaps not as good with the Cobra as it was with the, um, with the Mizuno. But it's quite a vast number of shots to be fair. So for, for the average, it was quite a tell telltale sign. You'll see, 4-4 spin really good, 211 carry, 13 launch, 102 peak height, 45 degree descent angle. So the issues I'd have is I preferred the higher launching ball of the uh, of the Mizuno. That peak height, massive, massive difference in peak height. Um, and that descent angle again, it's coming down at a lower trajectory. So again, ball fight that you're looking for, maybe you're playing on a Lynx track and you want that more penetrating ball fight off a five, but then you'd probably go for the Cobra. Um, maybe that 118 peak height with the Mizuno is too high, I don't know. But for me, um, there was definitely a noticeable difference in yardage. And like I said, it wouldn't be the reason I choose it. But for me on a personal level, it is why that club has ended up in my bag. And like I said, if you've seen recent videos, there's a bit of a giveaway. So from when I recorded this, and it, you know, I mentioned earlier on, we lost, uh, we lost the data from the first test, which was very, very similar to be fair. Um, I have since recorded what's in a bag and that five wood from Mizuno has gone straight into it. Having said that, it was the yardage thing that made it go in because it fit a number for me. But in terms of would I game any of these, absolutely, they were so impressed, uh, really impressed with either. And, and what I would say again, it opened my eyes massively and reminded me that, you know, as average golfers, these are such a versatile club to have in the bag, really is. All out, 220, we had some longer balls in the overall averages of 225 and up to almost 230 at times. So really giving it a rip if you wanted, but again, you could hit a softer shot and take a bit off that as well. So yeah, loved it, really enjoyable. Uh, right, that's me done. Uh, make of uh, the numbers what you will. Uh, I'll throw a dispersion chart up now because I always tend to say I'll do that and then forget, but here you go. Again, not a lot to split them to be fair. 
as ever with my strokes, uh, we've got a few left, few right, and uh, a few down the middle, so we're always variable. Um, anyway, as I was saying, or trying to say, thanks for watching, hit that subscribe button and uh, comments down below, and I'll see you all very soon. I hope you enjoyed the Masters last night. At this point, obviously, I don't know who won, but I'm wearing my green Masters cap. See you soon.